Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining again today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Taryn Callion. I work with Novi's Customer Success and Advisor Partnership Programs. Uh, today's webinar is going to be on the basics of percentage of completion, uh, billing, and uh, accounting. Uh, and it's going to be run by Tanya Schulte, who is one of the advisors in our network who is extremely knowledgeable with uh, construction. And we've actually done a lot of back and forth. She's done a webinar with us in the past, and she's very knowledgeable and uh, is uh, always a good resource to discuss whenever you have questions on construction accounting. Uh, I'm going to keep my part of this really short and sweet. Uh, basically, progress invoicing is a really hot topic in construction, especially recently. Uh, you know, as more and more construction companies are getting into the cloud and they're using QuickBooks Online and finding that QuickBooks Online maybe doesn't have quite the in-depth progress invoicing features they need. Uh, a lot of the people who come to Noify are looking for this specific feature set. And beyond just needing a software to manage this, uh, a lot of them are just looking to learn more about it in general. So I think it's great that we can have someone who's an expert in the industry coming in, uh, not just talk about Noify, but more just about, you know, what is uh, progress invoicing? You know, how do we manage percentage of completion accounting uh, and learning more about work in progress as we go through this? Uh, after this, uh, after Tanya gives her uh, webinar and gives her presentation on, you know, what is uh, percentage of completion, uh, I'm going to go through Noify and show you guys a little bit more about how to manage it inside the software so you can learn about it that way. Um, and again, all this is recorded, so if you need to follow up at a later time and learn more that way, uh, you know, always just reach out to us or just check out our YouTube channel, and we are happy to uh, give you more info that way. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Tanya now. I'm going to bring you off mute. Where are you in here? All right. And you with us, Tanya? Yeah, here I am. Excellent. And then I'm going to go ahead and stop my share so you can pull yours up. Okay. Great. I'm assuming everyone can see my screen now. I have the chat pulled up. So if you're in chat, if you could just type, ah, great. Thank you, Alicia. Looking good to me. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, guys. Well, thanks for joining us. As Taryn said in his great introduction, thank you, Taryn, and thanks, uh, Noah Fine Seacam, for asking me to be here today. Uh, we're going to talk about the basics of percentage of completion accounting. And I'll just tell you a little bit about me. Oh, I'm going to get this back over to my screen now so I can switch my slides. There you go. Um, I am the founder of Schulte and Schulte LLC. I personally have been in construction accounting since 1998, which as you can see from that fairly recent picture of me, I've been doing this since I was about three. <laughs> and I'm certified in, the, the bad part about doing webinars is I don't know if all my jokes are falling. So hopefully you guys are laughing. You can type ha 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 in the chat if you think I'm funny. I'll, I promise I'll leave all my corny jokes here on this slide. Um, I'm certified in QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Online, Noify and HubDoc, that's our firm's basic tech stack. We try to streamline our processes and keep it simple. I'm the wife of the other Schulte. You, some of you may have met Joe Schulte at some of the uh, conferences around. And I'm a mom of three awesome kids. They are my reason for Schulte and Schulte. And I'm a chocolate lover, which in my, <laughs> thanks, Karen. In my uh, live presentations, I often say, please send chocolate up my way and pass it up to the front. But since this is a webinar, I'll make sure that Taryn has my address and you guys can mail me some chocolate. <laughs> okay, I, again, I promise I'll leave all the corny jokes on that slide. I want to respect everyone's time and I definitely want to make sure that we get through all of this um, in enough time for Taryn to show you how some of this can work in Noify. So the basics of percentage of completion accounting. When Taryn and I first started talking about doing this, I did want him to make sure that in our title and in our marketing that we stressed that we're just talking about the basics. We're gonna scratch the surface here today and I hope that you will then be able to do a deep dive into this uh, in more depth. But hopefully at the end of today, you'll have some hooks on which to hang some more knowledge. Um, and that's the goal of today. So we're gonna talk about what it is, why, but and estimating is so important, which is another area that Taryn didn't even touch on that is a huge help in um, Noify, and I'm sure he can show you some of those tools as well, and counting that's involved and how to pull it all together. 
So what is percentage of completion accounting? It is an accounting method. I'm sure that you guys are all pretty familiar with cash and accrual. And then another method that can be used for long-term contract contracts is called completed contract method. And today we're going to be talking about percentage of completion. Um, and just to tell you just a little bit about how completed contract and percentage of completion differ, um, in the completed contract method, the, the, and both Completed contract and percentage of completion methods are both typically used for long-term contracts. So how they differ is that in the completed contract method, um, we are looking at, we're recording our income and expenses as being received when the contract is complete. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not necessarily sending billings out to the client, and it doesn't, it certainly doesn't mean that you're not receiving vendor bills, because all along the way, as you're doing that long term contract you're going to be have to you're going to have to be ordering materials you're going to have to pay for laborers all of that's happening but you're recording it on the balance sheet in the completed contract method and at the end of that you're then moving it all Ooh, it looks like your audio tax liability different uh, Sorry, let me uh, take a quick little pause. I think the, the audio is cutting in and Okay, and I'll try to stand a little bit closer too, so hopefully that'll help. Um, anyway, in the completed contract method, you do get some reporting that income right up front, and so you're deferring most of those tax liabilities because you're, you're letting the IRS know that you're using this completed contract method. But there are some risks inherent with that in that, as we all know, tax regulations can fluctuate. So there are some risks in that. And the other thing about I wanted to note about the completed contract method, it is the most conservative method because by the time that you report that income and those expenses on your income statement, you do know what they are. And you know exactly what happened. In the percentage of completion method, this is where we're going to dive in, and this is what we're talking about today. We're recognizing the income and expenses based on some sort of calculation of the percentage of completion on the project. So we have to have some basis for knowing how far along we are in the project, and then based on that, we're going to go ahead and recognize those income and expenses. And like it says at the bottom, that's relying on the matching principle, where we're recognizing income and expenses in the same period. Um, and there are some tax deferral benefits with this because you do get to defer. You're not billing the entire long-term contract. You're not billing that all up front. Uh, but there's a little bit less of risk there because you're billing it all along the way. So if taxes do fluctuate, you still get to take advantage of the tax laws as they are at the time that you record this income. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these next two slides, but um, to answer someone's question that I did see, um, there we will get these slides to you. So I would encourage you, don't worry about writing down this link. But I would encourage you to go out and look at FASB's uh, website. They do have a statement of position about this method of construction contracting and when it's appropriate to use and why you would want to use percentage of completion. So I would encourage you to make that part of your deeper dive after this and find out more about it. But I will just say that the main things to know about it is that you have to be able to reasonably estimate your costs Again, NOFI being huge and helping you to budget and understand. Understanding of how this works in an economic sense is that what you're selling is the progress on the, the job. That's what you're billing for every month. And so that's how this is working. And of course, that both sides have to have some enforceable rights, which pertains to lien rights, and that's a whole other webinar. But um, you know, as the work progresses, you're basically releasing that part of the job. Okay, really quickly, just another thing to note, there are some other ways that we could arrive at what the percentage of completion is, and I'd encourage you to maybe look into that. There, those other ways for the percentage of completion method, the method within the method that we're gonna talk about today, 
is the cost to cost method. And the reason I wanted to point that out and why that's important is because it's very important to accurately estimate your costs when we're using the cost to cost method. So I want you guys, I'm gonna take some time on this slide. I want you to maybe write down this formula or take a picture of this. This is the basic formula that we're gonna be talking about, about how to figure our percentage of completion on a job. And that is that our percent complete is equal to our total construction costs, and this is actuals. So percent complete is equal to total actual costs divided by our total estimates. I'll let you guys kind of think that our percent complete Um, divide them so by total estimates to find our percent completion. And so I'm getting a couple more people saying that the audio is coming in and out. Uh, and I'm actually going to kind of use this to yep. fill in a little bit of notify info as well. Uh, Tanya, if you want to switch to the phone for the audio option, sometimes that's a little bit smoother because uh, yep. you can run into like a landline or something like that. Um, but I'm happy that Tanya actually brought up this calculation here because this is actually something that's happening in real time in Noify when you're using uh, any of your projects. Uh, we do have our process where we allow you to set up a budget before you bid out a price to your client. Uh, it's kind of the simultaneous process of estimating the cost of the job and using that estimated cost to you know, build your budget using all of those numbers. And so we can actually show you a real-time percentage of completion based off of your actual costs, like Tanya has here, your total construction costs, versus what you had put up as the estimated cost of uh, completion. Uh, there's always uh, other X factors that go into your percentage of completion when it comes to construction. Uh, like uh, consider a lot of project managers will have their own kind of mental idea of what a percentage of completion is. When it comes to the raw financial side of a project, this formula is actually a very important one to uh, kind of keep in mind as you work through a project. And it doesn't always just show, you know, beyond uh, dollars versus dollars, because, you know, the more you order an item, the more hours tracked versus how many items you thought you were going to need, how many hours you thought it was going to take. You know, that information is really updating in real time as you go through. And that's really where the benefit of this number comes from. Awesome. Can you guys hear me better now? Yeah, it's coming in nice and smooth now. Perfect. Thank you, Taryn. Sorry about that, guys. There's always technical difficulties, right? So that's great. Thank you, Taryn, for sharing that. And yeah, and part of what I was going to say a little bit later, too, is that one of the things that a lot of our clients love about Noify is the ability to see what's your actual person of completion and then kind of take a look at what is um, out there, too. So looking at actuals and also looking at committed costs is great in Noify. Okay, so back to that estimating is key. We're going to, I'm going to jump in and say, as some of you probably already can tell by now, or if you know me, you know, I'm kind of a Noify fangirl. <laughs> and so um, one of the things that brought us to Noify, because I found it to be so beautiful within Noify, is the way that you're able to budget in Noify. And as advisors, we want to help our clients be able to estimate better. Because as you dive into percentage of completion accounting, the folks that are going to ask you for your percentage of completion financials want to know if you're good at your job. They want to know if you're good at estimating and they want to know if you're good at project management. They're going to see that on your financials. And so estimating is one of the biggest parts of this that's so important. And the basic things that they're going to need to be able to estimate well are materials, labor, equipment, subcontractor, and of course that nebulous other. Um, but these are the basic things that we help our clients figure out how to estimate their costs on. And Noify does all of these really well. We'll talk about that as we go through this section. Um, you know, the garbage in, garbage out principle applies. You can talk this over with your clients as you're helping them understand how to do better estimates. And yes, you will be getting copies of these slides. I'm not gonna touch on every point on this slide, but I wanted to point out on this slide when you're helping your clients um, do estimating, Help them make a master checklist. Um, help them make a, some type of a templatized format for creating their estimates. Um, that's so huge. We see so many of our clients that just sort of throw their bids together and they don't know exactly what all the things are that might need to be on it and that can come back around to bite them. So as an advisor, some of the questions that you can be asking them when you're helping them set up these types of 
formats and procedures and processes is what are the types of things that you often need to include on your estimates? So let's think that all the way through. Let's put all that on the checklist. Then ask them what are types of things that you don't often need to put on your estimates, but sometimes do. Let's make sure that goes on the checklist too so we don't forget it. And maybe a really good question is, Mr. Client, what has what, when was the time that there was an estimate and you forgot something and that came back around to bite you? Let's make sure we get that on the checklist. So um, help them make that master checklist and, you know, reassure them. That's not because you don't think that they know how to estimate. They're, they could be very good at estimating. But for instance, here in our firm, we have a master checklist that we use for our clients when we're doing our month end close. And it's not because we're not good accountants. All of us on our team have been doing this for a long time. But it's because we forget things. We're only doing these month end closes once a month. So let your client know that too. So we're in the same boat. We make master checklists on our end. But as the advisor, help your clients see the best way to, to get that set up and help them get that going. Noify is a great place to do that. They have different ways you can templatize things. It's fantastic. Um, and the other thing I want to point out on this, and it's bold on here, is do all of the above for change orders too. And we'll talk about that a little bit later too, but make sure that your clients are um, going out and getting the proper information that they need for change orders. So this is a huge thing that often comes around, back around to get them. Stuff is happening out in the field. It's crazy. The super on the job comes to the project manager and says, we need this change order. It's got to be done now. And you want to just shoot from the hip because that client wants an answer. Can you do it? And what's it going to cost? But encourage them to say, I will get that to you as soon as I can pull all the numbers together and then get back into the office, take out their master checklist and do that for change orders as well. So just say ways that you can value add for your clients is to help them set a lot of these processes in place so that they're estimating properly and we're getting proper numbers on percentage of completion accounting. Help them to stop throwing darts. Um, they should have an accurate database of cost information. If you're setting this up in Noify, know that you're able to set up a labor burden in there. You're able to set up a database of cost information that, if you're tying it back to QBO, ties into your products and services list. Um, there's a lot of really great ways in Noify that you can set this up with them. Um, if you didn't see our previous uh, webinar about labor burden, I would encourage you to go back and watch that and, and help them get that set up. But they also need to be repeatedly and systematically verifying the accuracy of that info. Again, just stop throwing darts. Let's get the information in there. Let's have really good cost information in our system. Let's repeatedly and systematically check it. And let's have more than one person involved in that. You could be that other person. The last thing on this slide says assist them with assessing that or help them find that good person in their office that will be their second pair of eyes. Help them calculate their labor and equipment burden. Maybe suggest that they obtain supplier catalogs that they can use for that. One great thing, advisors, about building a niche firm is that you're able to create great relationships within that industry. So maybe you know that you have mutual clients with Rebecca at ABC Supply and you get to know her and you often talk to her to get some information from her. You find out that she has a downloadable catalog of, of cost information. Then when you have another client in that space, you can say, hey, Rebecca ABC Supply has a downloadable cost catalog. Let's get that uploaded into your Noify and let's, let's get that down for you. So that's another great reason to be a niche firm. You can build some of those great relationships. Okay, we kind of ran through all of that because this is where we're gonna kind of dive into the accounting, the percentage of completion accounting that's put together. And again, I wanna respect your time and I want us to have time for Taryn to show you some of this and I want us to have some time for questions. So we're going to, now then, we kind of, I didn't want you to feel like I rushed all that, but we're going to dive in here. Okay. In the chart of accounts, there are three main accounts that we're going to be dealing with when it comes to accurately accounting for your percentage of completion accounting. And they may be named some different things. That's why I went ahead and also designated where you'll find these on the chart of accounts. Um, you may find that if you're dealing with a client that already has some of this set up, that these accounts have been named something else. But the three are costs in excess of billing, 
and that's going to be either on the current or other assets section of the chart of accounts. It could maybe be called costs greater than billings, something like that. The other one is billings in excess of costs or billings greater than costs. That's likely to be found in the current or other liability section of the chart of accounts. And then the income account that we're going to be dealing with can be called tons of different things. It could be called uh, current year percent completion revenue, as we have here. Some people call it over under billing, pretty descriptive, because that's what we're actually going to be putting there. Um, just different things that that may be called. So you might have to find out exactly where this accounting was being done before if you're if you're jumping in as an advisor where this was already being done um, and just decide between if you're setting this up with your client decide between the two of you what you want that income account to be called so it'll be clear and easy to for you guys to find after you've got those chart of accounts accounts set up then we need to prepare a work in progress report and we can do that manually or we can do it uh, using some great reporting features that we have in Noify. I think uh, there's fantastic, I think the advanced job report um, is where we're gonna get some of these numbers if we're gonna start getting our numbers out of Noify. But again, and I want you guys to understand what you're looking at if you're trying to use that advanced jobs report. So let's talk about what should be on the WIP report and, and what we're using it for. So first we're gonna, on the WIP report, the first basic step that we're gonna do is determine our percentage of completion. There may be a lot of other things going on than what I'm gonna talk about here today. Your, your WIP report may be a little more advanced and may be doing some other things, but these are the basic things your WIP report should be doing. Determining what your percentage of completion is. So remember, our percentage of completion calculation is that our percent complete is equal to the total construction cost divided by the estimated cost to complete. And then the other main thing we're asking the WIP report to help us determine is where we overbuild and or underbuild on the project. Why is that important? And sometimes some of you may have heard this called a surety accounting because uh, sure, bonding underwriters and uh, sometimes banks may be asking your clients to provide them with percentage of completion financial statements. And the overbilling and underbilling is really what they're looking at to see, like we talked about a little bit earlier, if your client estimates well and if they manage their projects well. Because as we get into how this works, you're gonna see if they're often underbilling on a project, they're probably not estimating quite correctly. And if they're overbilling often at the beginning of a project, for various reasons they may decide to do that on purpose, but that can lead to some cost fade, and then you may find that at the end of the job, you're actually losing money because you didn't account for all that properly overbuild too much at the beginning. So let's look at two example projects and kind of try to pull all this together and see what it actually looks like. So project A and project B, we're going to talk about over a period of two months, and this is all being done as part of your month end close. So these numbers are total aggregate numbers on these two projects at the end of the month. So, meaning the numbers in this column, I'm not saying for project A in period two, the second month, that they had an additional 7,500 in cost. We're saying that total for that job at the end of period two, month two, they had a total of 7,500. So that'd be an additional 2,500 in costs over month one. So that's important because our percentage of completion calculation is always coming off of total numbers. And you'll see that when we put it all together on that WIP report. Um, and then the other thing, some of you are probably pretty savvy and you've already done our percentage of completion calculation. I tried to make these numbers really simple for you and make this a pretty simplified example. But on that first month, this is the first month anything's ever happened on this project. And if we take our formula that we've been talking about all along, and we take our actual costs and divide them by our estimated costs, you guys have already figured out we're at 50% complete in this first month on this job. That's, yay, give yourselves a round of applause. You did your first percentage of completion of calculation on this job. So now then, let's talk about 
some of these numbers and then we'll go put it all together on the WIP schedule. One thing I wanted to point out because we've been talking about change orders being so important, and I want you guys to see how that can affect this as we move forward. For this project A, by the time month two rolled around, it looked like this contractor has issued a change order because the contract amount has gone up and he's done his job really well on the estimating side because his estimated costs have gone up, his budget has gone up for his cost. So that he did really well. I don't know if it's the same project manager on Project B or not, but they didn't do as well. <laughs> this contract has gone up, but we see his estimated costs haven't gone up. So as an advisor, this is a place when you get these numbers at the end of the month and you're walking through this with your client, this is where you want to say to them, hey, I think we've missed something here. Let's take a look and see how we got this change order out to the client, but we haven't upped our budget. So that could be a problem. So I wanted to point that out to you and you'll see how that plays out as we prepare the WIP report and how that might be a problem for your client. Okay, here's what a work in process or work in progress um, schedule would look like in the first month. We've just taken all those numbers that were from that first period and we've plugged them in here on a WIP schedule. And again, in Noify, there is that great advanced jobs report and it's going to give you at the end of the month or any time that you go and ask for it this great information so really the only thing that you'll have to calculate and it's the one thing that you'll see is added here that we have calculated is what we over and under build we talk a little bit about over and under billings and like Taryn was saying progress billing being such a hot topic there's in a perfect world and then there's in a real world that we all live in so what happens a lot with progress billings, especially in an AIA style progress billing environment, is that often subcontractors and subcontractors and generals alike are asked to submit a billing for the progress of that job right around the 20th to the 25th of the month. But they're being asked to submit that information uh, for that particular month that you're billing in, meaning you're guesstimating what your percentage of completion will be by the end of the month. Now, like I said, with Noify, what's great is you can, if everything's entered in Noify, you can see your actuals. So when you're asked to present that billing, say around the 23rd of the month, you can see what your actual is. You also have the ability to see your committed costs on that job, which can help. So this gives your project manager then some fantastic tools at his disposal to make better guesstimates of what his percentage of completion will be at the end of the month when he's being asked to present that bill. But at the end of the day, we are still guesstimating. Things can happen, things will happen. So you're presenting a bill around the 20th or 25th of the month, and you're saying by the end of that month, this is what we consider our percentage of completion will be. Then, when we put all this together in the WIP report, we start to do some math and we can see that we've over and under built some things because of that. So let's do the math and figure out how this all goes together. We have $5,000 in current costs. That's our actuals. We're gonna divide that by the $10,000 of estimated costs. We already did that math. We know we're at 50% of completion. Now the way we're gonna figure whether we're over or under build is we're going to take that 50% and multiply it by our contract amount. What we set up front that this total contract would cost our customer. And at 50% on that contract, we in a perfect world would have billed $7,500 on that progress bill. But for whatever reason, the project manager estimated he'd be at 60% complete on that job by the end of the month. So he billed it at 9,500 and that left us with an over billing of $2,000. Everybody with me so far? Is that math all making sense? Cool, thanks Stacy. All right, let's do the same math on that second line. I was gonna show you this is the line we're on. Okay, so the same math, we take our actuals, we divide it by our estimated costs, we come up with we're 30% complete, we multiply it by what the overall contract was going to be, and we see then 
that even though we only build 18,125, in the perfect world, we would have built 21,750. So we've underbilled that one by 3,625. Now, again, I keep saying in a perfect world, there are sometimes some legitimate reasons why we may overbill for mobilization purposes and things like that. And I don't want to discount that. But again, this is just scratching the surface of how they, these numbers, when we're, when we're putting these financial numbers together, that's how this plays out. And we're going to use that percentage of completion to say what we were over and under billed. So it's not always a bad thing to be, to be over billed, is what I'm trying to say. But we do as often as possible want to, want to be pretty accurate on this. Okay, how does this work then in, with those chart of accounts? That we were talking about. So now we have to take these over and under billing numbers that we've discovered what they were and we're going to create a adjusting journal entry to adjust our financial statements because of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take any of our under billings, the jobs where we could have billed a little bit more, and we're going to go ahead and throw that out into the asset account that we created because now that's an asset on our books. We could have built a little bit more on that. And we're going to take the $2,000 over billing and we're going to say that's a liability because we technically over billed on that a little bit. That's a liability on the books. Okay, those two. And then the balance of that, we're either going to debit or credit. In this case, credit, so our journal entry, and of course we're gonna to have to have that um, total journal entry, so two sides are matching up there. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and, and credit, so add to income, an additional $1,625 on our income statement for that month. Everyone following along on that adjusting entry on the accounting that we're doing there? You can tell me in the chat if you're there. So basically we're just saying, look, we could have billed an additional $1,625 in income and we're reporting that as, as that additional amount of income on that month. And then at the beginning of the next month, we're doing the reversing of that adjusting entry. Pretty simple accounting on the reversing there. It's reversing it. Okay, in the second month, I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly because we already know how to do the math. I just did wanna point out, now we're dealing with aggregates, right? Because we moved prior costs over we added the second amount, the 2,500, so now our aggregate actual cost for that is 7,500. And we're dividing it not by the original 10,000 that was on the contract, but by the new estimate of cost. The new estimate of cost that went up, remember, because we had that change order on this job. So it's always important, again, you've got to be getting really good information to get this. And that's, again, the beauty of the advanced jobs report all of this is in there for you because they're doing their budgeting and they're estimating in Noify and that's all already in there. And all of your actual expenses are in there too. And you pull up that advanced job report and you just have to calculate what was over and under bill. Okay, so that's the math for line two. So I would point out, we talked about this a little bit because we didn't adjust that 50,000 up for this change order. That's causing a problem for your client on his overs and unders. He's, again, on this job, he's well underbilled. And I have a suspicion that that has to do with the fact that he didn't estimate correctly. He didn't, or he, at least he didn't add in his cost estimate into these figures. So let's say that he, because of that change order, wanted to, you know, go ahead and make that 55000 that would result in a percentage of completion of only 50%, and then his billing would be well more in line with what it really should have been for that month. So you probably just forgot to estimate for that. So if you could catch that up front before you prepare the WIP schedule, before you do all this accounting, that will help him tremendously to make this more accurate. And it's the same, same math on these journal entries. We're just gonna go ahead and put in on the balance sheet what we over and under build and go ahead and, and take the balance and put that out on the income statement. Cool, I'm gonna turn this back over to Taryn and let him demo 
how like the budgeting and estimating and the progress invoicing and that advanced job report. I really want you guys to see that. I'm gonna turn this back over to Taryn. Awesome, thanks Tanya. I'm always uh, happy to learn a little bit more about the accounting side of these things. Obviously I spend a lot of time you know, uh, in NOAA working with contractors and uh, it's nice to know kind of how it would work on the journal entry side of things, you know, what accounts you guys are using, because these are the questions that, you know, we get internally on the NOAA team that, uh, you know, we're never quite as knowledgeable on. And the, I guess this is a lot of why we have the advisors network. So, you know, we can send on contractors to uh, advisors like you guys who have best practices on the matter. So uh, thanks a lot for the whole presentation. Uh, I'm going to go through a couple. Uh, I really just set up one really simple example just uh, so I can show you how a lot of this stuff is run in Noify, uh, mainly the WIP calculation. And so I've set up this job in uh, my Noify account. Uh, this is my contract jobs table uh, that you know, is kind of our home base in Noify so I can see where I stand. And what I did is I went really simple with the numbers. I set up a $10,000 contract, which I budgeted to cost me $1,000. We're going to be turning quite the profit on this project if we can stay on budget. <laughs> uh, and the idea is that uh, as you go through Noify and you're tracking all of your material costs, logging your time in the project, uh, we get to see how far we are uh, as far as our cost versus budget goes. And since we have the contract total, we can get you that work in progress uh, number by taking your percentage of completion, which is our cost versus budget, and multiplying it by the contract value to show you work in progress. And we show it as a revenue number. We do have a setting in your admin section if uh, your contractors would rather not see it as revenue. Uh, but we can even show you where this number is coming from. You know, show your total budget, your, uh, and again, Tanya had brought up committed costs. That's how we prefer to calculate these numbers in NOFI, just so you can see a little bit more in real time uh, where you stand on a project. Uh, and so we just give them a little bit more information because as a contractor, you know, they don't see WIP quite the same way. So it's nice for them to have a little bit more information on this. Uh, and even off of what uh, Tanya was saying with over and under billing, you know, we show, you know, uh, based off of the current cost and budget information, you know, you have an invoice quite enough to uh, match how much you've spent. That's why you have positive WIP. Whereas if I've overbilled on a project and it shows me the negative number, it actually shows them that here. Cause you know, there's always a red flag that you'll get as a contractor if you see a negative number. So this is kind of the reassurance that like, this is actually a good thing. You want to see a negative number in a situation like this. Uh, and just to give you more information on what happens, you know, what is building up this number, um, I'm going to open up my plan and track, which is kind of my cost tracking center of a job in Noify. Uh, and this is where I can see the overall, here's my cost to date versus budget. And I can see it broken down to more info if necessary, material cost versus budget, labor cost versus budget. I can see what goes into this. Uh, Tanya also touched on another uh, really important topic that we always kind of stress uh, when we're talking to our uh, contractors using Noify. And that's the concept of garbage in, garbage out. Uh, the reality is the more time you spend building a detailed budget, uh, the more accurate and the more detailed of reporting you're going to get when you're tracking your actual versus uh, estimated in Noify. Uh, I went really high level with this budget, and right now I'm in active mode. Just to show you what I built when I set up the budget, I'll switch to edit mode. I just said 500 materials, 500 labor. But I could have come into a situation where I set this up and said, you know, I'm going to need a foreman. Uh, it's not going to let me because I already started tracking my time on this. But I could have specifically chosen a type of worker. I'll use project manager instead for the sake of example, and say eight hours of this type of worker. And so I have these types of options as well if I want to get more detailed than just what I have written in as $500. Uh, I'm going to continue without saving so I can go back to my original budget here. Uh, but aside from this, because this is just showing me the raw numbers, uh, Noify has what we call the project report that's uh, accessible in the plan and track section of any of your project. And what this runs is a PDF. I actually already have one for this project open here. Uh, but this actually shows me a percentage of completion on a project. Uh, and if necessary, breaks it down per phase. Uh, we break it down per phase in case your phases meet, match your line items so you know how much to invoice out of each individual item. Uh, but it showed me that based off of my cost versus budget, I'm about 63% complete with this job, uh, which means when I'm submitting an invoice to the client, I know that I want to invoice 63% of the contract. Um, and so what I'm going to do is use that information in my contract when it's time to actually send something to the client. 
So if I hit invoice now, Nova will actually prompt me, you know, what percentage do you want to invoice? I actually just write in that 63%. I'm actually going to round up almost a bit of a rounder. So I'll call it 65%. And I'm actually technically overbilling by just a little bit. Uh, and when I create this invoice, it'll track it as revenue on the project. Uh, for what it's worth, for those of you who don't know, this would create an invoice in my QuickBooks account as well, and we will sync your payments up. But just to show you how this updated the project, if I come back here now, my work in progress is now negative because I had finished 63% uh, and I've invoiced 65%, and so that's where I'm getting this number. It's showing me the overbilled amount to date. Uh, and so I'm getting all that in real time while we work through the project. And then if I start to increase my labor cost in this project again, it'll adjust the work in progress again. And it all just happens you know, with the time entries, with your purchase orders. So I don't have to run reports later on. I can know exactly you know, when I go over or under this number. Uh, and another thing that Tanya had touched on a lot, and again, I'm happy that you're bringing this stuff up because this is really good NoFi uh, you know, reporting. In your job reports, we have what we call the advanced job report. And I actually have this open here for that specific project for the sake of example. Uh, I ran it before the invoice, so you'll be able to see it uh, a little bit differently. But we run a table, not unlike what uh, Tanya was showing you in her example here. I'm going to hide a couple of the extra rows here. Um, and so, you know, in that project, it's saying my current WIP is uh, 6,339. Uh, and then it gives me more information on my cost versus budget. And I can see that on a labor material and subcontractor breakdown, but then I can also see it at the total. And you can see that it's showing me my percentage of completion as we go through this. And so we can run this, this report, not just per project, but I can run this across any job that I have uh, in my NoFi account. Uh, I just chose you know, this one day uh, worth of projects for the sake of you know, uh, keeping it simple. But all of this is updating, and so you can have these numbers. So when it comes time to actually make any of your adjustments and journal entries in QuickBooks, you'll have a list of a work in progress number for every single job you have in your system. And we give you this raw data dump so it's easy to manipulate in an Excel sheet. Uh, these are just kind of the types of reporting uh, that we like to offer in NoFi, just to make it a little bit easier on your end as advisors. Again, you know, we will give you free access to any of your clients' accounts. So that way, you know, you don't have to, uh, you know, they don't have to kind of fight to get you into the NoFi account or anything like that. You know, we want to encourage any of the uh, contractors to give you access and let you help their business. And uh, this is one of the many ways we do that. Um, that's really all I wanted to show in NoFi. I mean, beyond uh, that, you know, Tanya's examples were much more in depth uh, than what I showed you here. I just wanted to keep it really high level. But uh, you know, we have a variety of other tools too. Uh, she did touch on the idea of change orders and adjusting your budget uh, with the change order. You do have the ability to uh, adjust your budget at any point in time, whether you want to adjust the existing budget or say, you know, change order budget, and then you know we're gonna have to order $500 more in materials, and then I can add a change order in my contract and say, you know, uh, I'm just gonna go change order for $1,000. This will adjust all of my work in progress numbers as well. So that way I don't have to you know, uh, run any extra reports or anything or set up a separate job. It's all built uh, to actually handle this reporting. So I don't need to make you know, uh, any kind of workarounds to set up a change order. It's all just part of NOFI and what we do. Uh, that's really all I had as far as the NOFI demo goes. I'm gonna open this up. I see there's a couple of things in the chat. Uh, does NoFi combine POs yet for quantity discounts with suppliers? Uh, we can't combine existing POs. When you are logging a bill from a supplier, you can log multiple POs against one bill. Uh, and you can always add additional lines that maybe work from POs. So if you need to put in a negative value to show discounts or anything like that, that's always an option as well. Uh, another question, does NoFi show time as it's entered or paid? So we actually update time as each entry is entered by the people in the field. Uh, we do this to give you the most real-time job costing, and that's uh, a lot of what we were discussing in Tanya's last webinar on loaded labor burdens. You know, we obviously, uh, there are always going to be uh, systems that will pull the payroll, the actual, you know, pay sheets uh, that you're going to, or sorry, the checks that you're sending the employees and pull them back in for job costing. But the problem with reporting like that is that a lot of times you have to wait till the end of you know, every month, maybe a best scenario two weeks. 
And if you end up uh, doing something like that, you know, maybe you're going to end up tanking on a project before, you know, you know what's even happening. This is the benefit of what we're offering contractors that are using Noify is that if they see a project start to run a little bit more expensive than they expected, they can make the adjustment sooner rather than later. So they can make, uh, you know, make sure they don't end up losing more than they uh, you know, otherwise would have. Um, they also want to compare materials estimated to materials received. Yeah, we actually do have a place where you can mark materials as received as part of our purchase order management. Um, this actually, I set these up as cash purchases, but just to show you the same general idea, we actually show you in real time on the project, you know, here are my lumbers. Uh, I didn't put any in the budget. Technically, I just did a dollar figure budget, but I could say budgeted, how many have been uh, approved to be purchased, how many have been ordered, and then how many are received. So we give you all of that reporting just by scrolling through plan and track. The idea is that, you know, looking at the plan and track section should show you the full financial breakdown of what's happening in this project. So I don't need to run around to different corners of Noify. I want to be able to open this up and know exactly where I stand. Uh, that was the last of the questions we had. Uh, I just want to thank everyone again for joining in and kind of close out with a little bit more information on CCAN and, uh, you know, our goals for the future. Uh, we've been working for a while, and Tanya's actually been helping us with this as well, uh, to build a, a little bit more official of a certification. Uh, we're going to be running a webinar series uh, after uh, Scaling New Heights over the course of this summer, uh, where we will be uh, having a five-part series on a, uh, to qualify you to learn more about a five-part quiz. Uh, it'll be pretty simple stuff for anyone who pays attention, and then we will be recording them so you can watch them on YouTube afterwards as well. Uh, and then, you know, we'll be sending that out and we'll have a certain uh, grade required to pass and you can have a little bit more formal of a NOFI certification. It's really just a lot about, uh, you know, making sure that you are familiarizing yourself with uh, beyond NOFI, you know, best practices in construction, contract styles. And then when it comes to NOFI, how we're going to be integrating with your client's QuickBooks Online accounts uh, so you can make sure that everything ends up in the right place there. Um, and then Marnie beat me to this one. I will be at Scaling New Heights, and I encourage anyone to swing by our booth. We will have some swag to give away to you guys, uh, some pretty neat stuff. Uh, and I uh, always love meeting you guys in person. So swing by, say hi. Uh, I'm a pretty friendly person. I think anyone who uh, has met me will attest to that. Um, I think that's uh, just about all for today. I'm happy we can get you guys out uh, you know, in a pretty time-sensitive man manner. Uh, we will be posting this to YouTube pretty uh, soon, so stay tuned for that. I'll be throwing it in the Facebook group. We'll be emailing it out. Uh, if there's anything else I could do, please don't hesitate to email me directly. I'm always happy to answer any questions from our advisors. Uh, plus, support at Noify.com. Our whole uh, customer success team is always uh, incredible at helping with uh, any, any kind of questions you have. And I really want to thank Tanya again. She always does an incredible job uh, presenting, giving us information. And uh, I'm always happy to learn from her, so I hope you guys all are too. Uh, thanks again, and everyone have a nice rest of your day.